Oh, do you know what? I just love being the best life drawing teacher who can just explain this stuff clearer than anyone. What? What's this? Oh, thanks. Who is this guy? My name's Kenzo, this is Love Life Drawing, and we're gonna look at this book by Jake Spicer today. Um, is this book gonna give you the skills you need to achieve the drawings that you're dreaming of? But we're also gonna think about how to use resources like this, because just as important as how good the book or the video lesson or the course is, um, equally important is how you use it. So we're gonna talk about that too. Now I have to explain first any bias that I have. I have not been paid to make this video. I haven't been asked to make this video, uh, but I did get the book sent to me for free. More importantly, I am biased because I want to like the book because Jake Spicer made it and Jake Spicer has always been cool to us. He's always supported us. So I wanted to like it before I opened it. Bit of bias there. On the other hand, I'm obsessed with uh, how life drawing is taught and I can't help but just say what I think about that and how I would do it differently as you'll see. So it should be a good review. And the first thing I do when I come across a book or a video lesson or a course is I think, is this a teacher or a demonstrator? So I was gonna say teacher or show off, but I think that's a bit unfair. So a demonstrator is an expert artist who does a beautiful painting or a beautiful drawing on video or step-by-step -step in an article or something. And they just say what they do. This is how I do it. This is me doing the arm or whatever. And that's really useful to see expert demos, especially when you're later in the learning process. So you've got a foundation of skills and then you can pick things out from the demo and start to break them down and apply them yourself. When you're earlier in the, in the process, when you're starting out a little bit more of a beginner, those expert demos can be um, not so useful because you can't do that yet and you're not exactly sure what they're doing or how they're doing it. Uh, and then you try and apply what they say and it won't work, and then you might blame yourself. And what you really need then is a teacher. A teacher understands where you are and they're gonna give you the next step. They're gonna give you the next doable exercise that's gonna build the next skill that you need in a sequence that constantly sets you up for success. And that's the teacher's job. So if you feel like you're constantly flailing about and failing, uh, it may be because you're not, you don't have resources from someone who's a good teacher who's constantly setting you up for success every time. I think Jake Spicer is a really good teacher. So how do I know that? Well, for one thing, the exercises. Like there are exercises, which is a good sign, but better than that, for, he, he gives you terms of success. So what does that mean? Each exercise in here, it's not like the outcome is supposed to be okay, good, you've done a beautiful drawing by the end of this. No, the, the outcome is supposed to be you learned one specific thing. And often the results of the exercise aren't gonna look great. Uh, and what, what will happen is you do the exercise, you go, I did what the teacher said and the drawing looks horrible, but that wasn't the outcome that the exercise was intended for. So here he's outlining, how do you know if you did it successfully? Another sign is a teacher thinks about that sequence what order should you learn things in? And so he specifies that he suggests, you know, there's a section about materials, which you don't have to just work through in order. It's like a reference. There's a section at the end with lots of anatomy and construction ideas. You don't have to work through that in order. You can dip in and out of it. And then here are the sections about observation um, and about going beyond your observation. These are the sections that he's saying you, you might be able to just work through. So he's thought about the order that you do things in which I think is really, really good as well. So Jake's approach to learning life drawing is really emphasizing the observational skills. So what do I mean by that? I mean that when you start learning to draw a figure, you come into it with all these preconceptions, right? Um, this is what an eye looks like. Uh, it's kind of these symbols, right, that we have in our heads and that distorts your drawings. And so being able to see what you're seeing and draw what you're seeing with a fresh eye is really important. And so a lot of the exercises and stuff in here are designed to help you see with a fresh eye um, the sort of abstract shapes and things presented by the figure. And when my mum does life drawings, for example, that is how she's approaching it. So it's really about drawing what you see. The other approach would be a more construction 
approach where you learn your anatomy and you learn the building blocks of the figure and other, you improve your preconceptions, I guess, and you take that know-how and that knowledge and you bring it to the drawing uh, and you allow your observations to be informed by your knowledge. So those are two kind of different ways of approaching it. The construction approach is really great, especially if you want to draw from imagination because you can build the figure just from your know-how, but it's also great for drawing from, from reference. Personally, on, on Love Life Drawing, we'll take a more 50-50 approach. So we don't emphasize one or the other. So you'll, you'll learn observational skills, like seeing those abstract shapes, uh, learning about horizontal and vertical alignments and measuring and stuff like that. And you'll also learn um, some construction ideas, but simple ones, you know, you'll learn specific landmarks presented by the anatomy and you'll learn how to simplify the figure and some basic, you know, anatomical ideas and stuff. And you go 50-50 building both sides at the same time. Now, what's really interesting about this book is that you can learn that construction side of things from this book as well, right? So all the images that I just showed giving examples of what these construction ideas might look like came, come from this book. There's a huge section about that. It's just that that's not uh, the emphasis that Jake is giving when he, when he asked you to work through the book. But if you wanted to learn that construction approach, that this is also a really good resource for that, which is interesting, right? So if I was your teacher, we could use this as a textbook and I would give you exercises from different parts of the book and I could get you to learn my way of learning life drawing using this book as well because it's comprehensive, right? It's got this, it's got both sides and it's got tons of stuff in it. Another benefit, to, it's pretty big, right? So another benefit to it being so comprehensive is that uh, even as you get more advanced, um, there's a lot of stuff in here that's going to be interesting and useful. There's exercises in here you probably won't have tried. There certainly were for me or exercises that I just haven't done for a while. Um, and it gets you out of your comfort zone once you're in a rut with your practice, which is really cool. The downside to it being so comprehensive is it could be intimidating. It's pretty thick, right? And you're like, oh my God, do I really have to work through all of this to kind of get what life drawing is about? Now, like I said, I think you can use this, just work through it. If you don't wanna work through the whole thing in, in order, you can pick and choose what you do and focus on certain bits. And so if I was your teacher, this is how I would ask you to work through this book. These are the things I'd ask you to focus on. Now, I should also mention a couple of other cool things about the book. One is how it's written. So, I, you know, I pride myself on being quite like articulate and, and explaining things clearly. Um, but Jake has written this, written stuff that I've tried to describe in past videos and he's just described them better than I have in this book, which is annoying. And uh, also how it's bound. So I wish all art books were bound like this. So that's not broken. That's not like glue come away. It's bound like this. So that every page you open opens properly and fully and flat. So when you wanna draw from it or refer to it as your drawing, it just lies there open, which is great. So a normal book would be bound like this and keep wanting to close or keep wanting to flop to other pages. And then if you wanted to keep one page open, you'd have to weigh it down with something. So to conclude, Jake is a teacher and he's created a book that's a real achievement. Um, and I think you could really get a lot from it. You can work through it in different ways. I gave you my suggestion for one way to work through it, or you can work through it the way it's designed by Jake, which is probably great because he's such a great life drawing teacher. Maybe it's like the Highlander, like there can be only one. And that means if I chop Jake's head off, then I will be the greatest life drawing teacher. If you wanna know what my sequence is that I think you should work through the life drawing skills, I have a PDF guide that you can download for free below. You could combine that with this book, work through the book in that order if you want, or if you don't have that book, you can just work through it in order. There's links to tutorials for each skill set as well. So check that out at the link below. Um, and I hope you enjoyed the video. I'm trying to up the production quality. I don't know if it's, did you notice? I put so much effort in. Did you even notice? <laughs> uh, anyway, leave a comment below. 
um, how, what you thought about the video, what you think about the book, and uh, I'll see you in the next one.